Hey everyone, happy Sentinels Tuesday. I apologize in advance for any background noise. It's going to be hot today, and despite the fact that I'm recording early in the day to try and stave that off, I've got my window open, I've got a fan on, so yeah, that could happen. Other technical notes I don't think I mentioned previously, but in the last video I uploaded and the one the week before that, I'd been messing with the bitrate of the encoding of those videos, turned it down to 900 the first week, 800 the second week, in the hopes that it would stop that thing that happens where you know the video just freezes it didn't last week's video in fact had large sections of frozen video and as much as i'm tired of that if i'm gonna give you videos with frozen bits then they're going to be as high quality as possible so we're back up to a thousand kbps this week and from here on out i think it's just that my laptop does not have enough ram to do this well and this week is probably not going to be much better because i've already been up here for half an hour railing with the game and it looks like everything's running on fumes. So today's game, we're going to be looking at Guntar, the Chaos Chemist, who is a fairly old deck by flat on his face. He is billed as the most complex Sentinel's hero. Is this true? Trying to play as Guntar is a real trip. Here's what he says. He says, My friends and I have been playing a campaign of exalted-based RPG using the Mutants and Mastermind system for several months. During this time, I discovered Sentinels of the Multiverse. So yeah, this is, this is pretty old. I promised them that so long as we could come up with an interesting mechanic for each personal deck, I would design a Sentinels hero for each of their characters. One such character is Guntar, a scientist who speaks with a German accent, even though the rest of us who grew up with him know he is no more German than the rest of us. His method of conducting chemistry is to throw volatile materials together and see if it explodes. And the whole point of the deck is to make it as complex as possible. He will be fighting against Jade slash Orifel in Freedom Tower, but this is a modified Freedom Tower deck. I'm going to start showing these off as not the focus of the games. Adelphophage has done a bunch of modded decks. Hero decks, his villain variants that have the card changes, and now the environment decks. Pretty much just going to do these in the order that they appear in the bag that he put out. So I don't know what's awaiting us. I do know it's probably not going to be nearly as easy as regular Freedom Tower. That's kind of the point. And backing up Guntar, we have Dr. Jonas Venture Jr. because I need to get into some of the promos for custom heroes that I've done. Got Robo Buddy Unity. This is not the same Robo Buddy as, as I previously showed off. This one is by Mastermind93. Previous one was by Adelphophage. And not quite finishing out the hat trick of complicated science-based heroes. It's Impact. All right. So, Jade starts off with H-2 Guardians at the beginning of the game. It says, whenever a villain relic enters play, play the top card of the villain deck. Whenever a villain ongoing enters play, destroy it and play the top card of the villain deck. But she doesn't like ongoing. So, and we have High Tormal. Start of each hero turn, this card deals that hero to toxic damage. When this card is destroyed, build cards on the top of the villain deck until a relic is revealed and play it. Shuffle the remaining cards in the villain deck. And High Fail. The first time any hero target deals damage to any villain target each turn, this card deals that hero target 3 cold damage. That's a very nasty combo. So we're going to be taking constant damage, and if we try and retaliate, we're going to take damage. Well, no one ever said science was easy. So, let's begin. We get a Meji Guard. Reduce damage dealt to Guardians by one. Uh, figures. In the villain turn, this card deals the hero with the most cards in hand, two melee damage. Jade does nothing by herself, and in fact, let's see, so he's going to hit Impact for two. And then start a Guntar's turn, he takes two damage. Alright, so we will begin with Herbs, Roots, and Seeds. And I should mention the art's a little wonky because this is off of Cassandra's DLC, and her cards never quite line up right. His main mechanic is that he has three colors of liquid. I don't know what it's actually called, so I'm just going to name them by their colors. When this card enters play, we place seven green on it. You may then drain two green to play a card. Card. Dark can hold it to 10 green. When zero green remain on this card, destroy it. Villain cards ignore this card. I think the reason that, that line is in there is because there's a thought that if you have tokens on this, it's a target, but it's not. So we'll just ignore that and ignore the ignoring, because otherwise he has indestructible equipment. But I'm going to go ahead and drain two green, which I should mention is not well defined, but you can kind of figure out what's going on. And I'll play Flectomancy. After Guntar is dealt damage, you may drain one, so one of any color. If you do reveal the top three cards of your deck, Guntar deals the source of that damage, X lightning damage, where X is the number of pink revealed plus one discard the revealed cards. His power is research. Draw two cards and reveal a card from your hand. You may add two of the revealed cards color to one jar, discard the revealed card. So, draw two. And I can only hold green right now, and I didn't get any green. So that's limited, so I will discard that. And I can already see, you know, there are things about this character that you could change. That one's green. Go figure. 
Okay, well, that was an interesting setup round. Start of his turn, Dr. Venture takes two. He's gonna play Gardo. This enters play with a science token. I'm actually using the provided science tokens. End of your turn, this card deals the highest HP hero target for energy damage. You may remove a science token from this to redirect that damage to another target. Good thing is, Dr. Jonas Venture Jr., unlike his brother, who I should mention has a different nemesis symbol, his power is Ventec. Put a science token on one of your inventions. So he is much better at the inventions. Draw a card, and we'll remove a science token from Gardo, and just do, do four damage and take out the guard. That way it will be easier to get rid of the other guys. Okay, Impact's turn. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play Gravitic Warp. Play this card next to a target. Impact deals that target two infernal damage. Oh yeah, he takes two at the start of his turn. Play it next to High Fail, who then deals him three damage, but this says the next time the target next to this card deal damage, destroy this card for that damage. So, free two damage, and his Force Blast will deal an extra one, because that only goes off the first time anyone is hit. Draw a card. Start of her turn, Unity takes two, and I'm going to play Powered Shockwave, hit High Fail, take three, and hit everybody else for one. Her power is Girl's Best Friend, which, interestingly, was kept by the Adelphophage version. Power, place a card from your hand face down in your play area. Power, flip up to two face down cards in your play area, treating them as if they were just played. So it's another way to get bots into play with, you know, one remove. So I'll play two B bots and then flip them up or flip the one up next round if I really need it. So let's see what Freedom Tower has in store for us. Security Station, start of the environment turn, a player may discard their hand to destroy an environment card. Okay, so that hasn't been changed. Pretty much nothing happens. Mirage, reveal the top two cards of the villain deck. Put any revealed targets or transformation cards into play and discard the rest. Each goon deals the hero target with the highest HP one fire damage. Oh wow. And your revealed targets go into play. So we got the Moon Shard Key and the World Shard Key. <laughs> that means we get two card plays. So off the first Shard Key, it's another Mirage. That's a target. That's another Shard Key. Oh my god. Okay, so that was the first one. Here's the second one. It's not Mirage, thank god. And now the third one. So, a bunch of stuff just happened. Moon Shard Key. Start of the villain turn, reveal the top card of the villain deck. If a transformation card is revealed, play it. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of the villain deck. So, all the relics do that. At the end of the villain turn, the villain target with the highest HP deals the hero target with the highest HP two energy damage. That's not too bad. This one says the villain target with the highest HP deals the hero target with the lowest HP two melee damage. That's not great. High Asriel. When a hero card is played, this card deals the hero with the highest HP two psychic damage. Really need to get rid of Fail. Fail Shard Key. Whenever another villain target is destroyed, play the top card of the villain deck, so we have to kill that first. Meiji Clan Leader, reduce damage dealt to goons by one. In the villain turn, this card deals each hero target three melee damage. Meiji Nomad, at the end of the villain turn, this card deals the hero target with the highest HP, X projectile damage, where X is the number of guardians in play, plus two, that's a lot. This game's not going to go very well. So, the highest hits the highest for two, that'll be impact. Highest hits the lowest for two, that's Gardo. He hits everybody for three. Plectomancy. I drain one, reveal the top three cards of my deck. Yeah, I deal X lightning damage where X is the number of red revealed plus one. So I've got a yellow, a red, and a green. I will hit that guy for a grand total of one, which means he takes three. Wow. And then the Nomad is dealing five damage to impact. That's really bad, Hugh Cow. Oh man. Okay, start his turn, he takes two. Not gonna flect a Mancy. Yeah, okay, Sickening Agent. High Asriel hits the highest for two, that's Unity. This gives me a power. You may drain any amount of green, you may drain up to two yellow. So, I'm going to drain two green and no yellow. Here's where the complication comes in. Reveal the top X cards of your deck, where X is twice the number of green drains, so it'll be four cards. At the start of your next turn, reduce damage dealt by Z targets by Y, where Y is the number of green revealed, and Z is the number of yellow drained. Discard the revealed cards. So it's not the number of green drained, it's the number of green revealed. So I can do one target, going to be reduced. Oh, there's two green. Okay, one target will have their damage reduced by two. That's going to be Asriel, so that we don't have to worry. Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it high fail, because he'll still be dealing us damage, but Asriel only hits the highest. Ugh, and then draw a card. Oh yeah, the Ure. I listeners play with a science token. Okay, that needs three tokens to activate, so I'm going to use his power, add a token to it, draw a card. Oh yeah, start his turn, he takes two, and then two more to him. Okay, and then we will remove a science token from Gardo. He will deal four energy damage to the Veil Shard key, because we have to kill it first. He dealt damage to a villain target, so I fail, hits him for one, takes him out, and that's fine, because he was out of science tokens. Okay, start his turn, he takes two damage. King Orbit, two damage to Unity. When this card is play, impact deals a target to infernal damage. Yeah, we need to get rid of fail. 
since he takes one. Throw to your turn impact may deal a target with two projectile damage if he does destroy one of your ongoing cards. I will do that. Hit fail for another one with his power. And draw a card. Okay, start of her turn. She takes two. Supply crate. He takes two. Flectomancy. He revealed two red, so he hits Azrael for three. That means he also takes one. I could Flectomancy again. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, so that will be the end of this jar. Reveal the top three. Reveal the red. It's for two. Getting extra damage in. Taking extra damage, but getting it in. Anyway, Unity draws two cards, and we don't need to worry about killing stuff, so I'm going to use her power. Put Raptor Bot face down and draw a card. Okay, yeah, we don't need to do anything with that. Dr. Simpson's secondary lab. In the environment, turn reveal the top card of each hero deck and either discard or replace it. Once again, not finding anything changed. Okay, start of turn effects. Otherwise, put it on the bottom of the villain deck. Okay. Goon. The second one reveals another goon. Now she plays a card. That's never a good idea. Sandstorm. Shuffle the villain trash and reveal cards until X goons are revealed where X is one plus a number of environment cards in play. Shit. Get the Meji guard. I think that's the only one. Okay. End of turn. Let's see. Highest takes two. Dr. Venture. Lowest takes two. It's going to be impact. Everybody takes three. And then the highest takes five. That's freaking terrible. Unity. Oh yeah, and the most cards in hand takes two. That's anybody at the Guntar. We're gonna lose. We're gonna lose real hard. So, okay, the problem right now is he has nothing to drain, and he's probably gonna die before next turn, so he's gotta skip and draw two. Oh, good. So I got his other two jars. That's the red one, that's the yellow one. I don't know if he's gonna live to use them. Accidental mutations. Oh, right, he takes two at the start of his turn, and he didn't play anything, so that's nice. He takes two at the start of his turn. That goes away. I don't see a way that we can get out of this. Oh boy. So, playing that, two damage to the highest, that'll be that'll be him, I guess. One player reveals cards in their deck till they reveal two ongoing cards. Play one, shuffle the rest back into the deck. It'll be impact, because he's all about the... Ooh, repulsion field. Gravitational lensing. That is a really hard choice, except it's not a hard choice at all. Repulsion field. Okay, so, that gets played. When it enters play, he deals each non-hero target one energy damage. And he gets his damage reduction. So, I'm going to say that happens first. He dealt damage, which means he takes two from high fail and hit the goons. And then he played a card, so high Azreel hits Guntar for two. But he's got his damage reduction. That's really good. That's really important. Okay, add a science token to the Ure. Draw a card. And then this has three tokens on it, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Remove three tokens. And if you do, Dr. Venture deals a target 11 sonic damage. Yeah, let's kill High Tormal. So, we're no longer taking damage at the start of our turns. That's nice. Start of his turn, he can deal a target 2 damage. He will hit High Fail. We're no longer taking retaliation damage. And then that's destroyed. Okay, meditate. When this card is played, draw a card. And then two to the highest, which is him, so he takes one. When impact damage is a target, you may destroy this card. If you do, impact deals that target X infernal damage, where X is the amount of damage he just dealt. Now, this is going to be really stupid, but I'm going to force blast. I'm going to destroy repulsion field, because I just got another one. So instead of one damage, he does three. Do high Azrael. Then I'm going to destroy Meditate and hit her for three again. Draw a card. Okay, start of her turn. Actually, start of her turn, she draws two. Last time, should have just drawn one. That goes away. So the funny thing is, I can Construction Pile on and get the exact same effect from using her power. I'm going to play Volatile Parts. Two damage to the highest, that's Dr. Venture. And then we will use the second part of her power to flip two face-down cards face up, treating them as if they just entered play. Draw a card, and Raptor Bot will take out High Asriel. So, we're starting to make progress. All the damage now is coming from the goons. We don't need to discard our hand. Hidden Tower. Mission Control. At the end of the environment turn, reveal the top card of each hero deck in turn order. It's a one-shot or limited and already in play. Discard it, otherwise put it into play. What's been modified? <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter, because this isn't helping at all. All right, Dr. Stinson's lab. This is as we can discard any one-shots or limited cards. Yeah, that's the one-shot, so that'll go. Now, we reveal and put non-one-shots into play. Ion Shield. This enters play with a science token. And if you turn, you may remove three science tokens from this card. If you do reduce all damage dealt to hero targets by three until your next turn, I wish I could do that right now. World Obstruction. Oh, thank God. This card in play impact deals up to three targets, one projectile damage each. That'll be these. Reduce damage dealt by villain targets by one until the start of my turn. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Unity gets stealth bot. Okay, we may survive the round. I say may, because now the shard keys do their thing. That is a transformation card. Of course, that's an ongoing, so it's destroyed. That's right, transformation one shot is what makes her flip. So she plays the top card of the deck instead. Shuffle all guardians from the villain trash into the villain deck. Really? Really? 
Really? But it's not card of the villain deck. Orphel is not in play. Oh, it's Mirage. Wonderful. Hey, look, it's a shard key and a goon. That's great, guys. Fucking thanks. Ah, oh, shard key plays a card. So much for getting through this round. Oh, and there we go. Shard Walker's Awakening. One shot transformation. If Jade is in play, flip her villain character card. Orphel is flipped to the side. Shuffle all relics in the villain trash into the villain deck. Man, reduce damage dealt to Orphel by one. In the villain turn, he deals two your targets with the highest HP, three infernal damage each. When there are two relics in the villain trash, he flips back. At least there are relics in play that we can put into the trash now. So yeah, that was the first relic. Now we reveal for the second relic. Get out of your system. Third relic. Oh, hey, look, it's a transformation card. Or a in play, he deals each hero target one infernal and one projectile damage. You know what's really cool about that is that Stealth Bot has one damage reduction, so she eats all of that damage. Now we play a card. Sandstorm. I don't think there are any goons in the trash. Nope. Okay. Highest hits the highest for two. Stealth Bot will take that. Highest hits the lowest for two. That's B Bot. But he gets destroyed. And I'm going to do two damage to the new shard key because it says whenever a hero uses a power that hero deals themselves two psychic damage. I would like to get rid of that first. Or fell flips as soon as there are two relics. Oh right, he's dealing two, oh two to the two highest. So actually one and one to stealth bot. And then he deals two reduced to one reduced to nothing to stealth bot. Letting B-Bot go, not going to destroy an ongoing or environment. Oh, but she deals the non-hero target with the lowest HP to fire damage. Hey look, that's this shard key. That's one. Alright, Edgy Clan Leader hits everybody for three reduced to two reduced to one. So I can save three people from his hits. Alright, so Stealth Bot goes, that destroys a shard key, which flips Orifel immediately. <laughs> that means Impact will take two, Raptor Bot will take two, but that means it destroy the other shard key. Okay, now it's just us and Jade and some goons. It's the highest for two, that's Unity. Most cards in hand is Guntar. Oh, that's bad. Because he's actually got the most cards in hand, so he takes two and two. Oh boy. Okay, Powders, Dusts, and Minerals gets seven red but he's not going to have a chance to use it. Well, I can use it for Flectomancy, except as soon as he takes it, he's dead. So, research. Draw two, and I can add two of a discarded card's color to a jar. Drop that one for two red. Like I said, he's going down, so it doesn't matter. Draw a card. Venture Stein. This'll help. This card is destroyed. It deals up three targets, two fire damage each. That's pretty good since we have things hitting the lowest and hitting everything. I will add a token to the Ure because that's kind of important, and draw a card. All right, Hurled Obstruction goes away, but it was really important, and it did a good job. Accelerated Collision. We need to get rid of the Meji Leader, so I deal him two damage. I can play a card. Gravitational Lensing. Gardner's player, reveal the top two cards of your deck, replace one, discard the other. And then I'll do, I guess I'll do one to Jade, because that's all he can hit. All right, Unity plays a Construction Pylon and uses it to get a Raptor Bot and a Bee Bot. Holy crap. But that Raptor Bot's doing three damage, which is just enough to take out the Meji Clan Leader. Woof. Okay, we don't need to get rid of anything. Wraith's Arsenal, no change. So, reveal the top, and let's discard any one-shots. If it's a one-shot, I'm discarding it. If it's not, I'm putting it into play. So Guntar gets herbs, roots, and seeds again. That's nice. Seven green. Unity, destruction pylon. Not helpful, but there you go. Okay, no start of turn effects. Amazing. I Asriel again, we're gonna die. Because the goons reduce damage to her by two. Pretty bad. Okay, so he hits the highest for three. That's Dr. Venture. They're hitting the most cards in play. That's Guntar. He dies. Well, he gets use a power, draw a card, or heroes are immune to damage type of your choice until the start of your next turn. That sounds like a good idea. Let's make it psychic damage so we don't have to worry about high Asriel. Okay, violent malfunction. Destroy an invention. I'm going to drop the ion shield. If you do destroy an ongoing or environment card, we'll go ahead and get rid of the security room because it's not doing anything. And Dr. Venture deals each non-hero target to fire damage other than High Azrael. Then we will add a Science Token to the Ure. Draw a card. Okay, time for Repulsion Field. Impact deals each non-hero target two energy damage. Hey look, that takes out the guards. I can actually hit her. fan frickin' tastic Got his damage reduction back for all the good it'll do. That being said, I think I would like to be able to do that again. He will do two damage to this goon. So we don't really need to worry about Azrael at the moment. Draw a card. Brainstorm! Draw two. Damn, I was really hoping I would draw two bots, and then I could use that construction pylon. We'll do a little bit of damage. Draw a card. Skip her power. Actually, bother skipping it. Put brainstorm face down. Why not? Nothing else she can use her power next turn to get a free brainstorm. Then Raptor Bot will hit Jade for three. Okay, Freedom Tower. Oh yeah, first of all, Wraith's Arsenal. If somebody's not drawing a card, I guess that will be Impact. 
All right, oh, entry point, here we go. This is what's been changed. It's now a target. Increase damage dealt by villain targets by one. And this card enters play, destroy all but one room card. Okay, we are keeping mission control. So that's now a target with 10 HP, and it destroys rooms instead of covering them up. Honestly, I like that. Still don't like that we're taking extra damage, but whatever. Now we do mission control. Ah, okay, Jade. Relic, when she plays a card, I fail. Oh no. Another villain target is destroyed, play the top card of the villain deck. Okay, shit. So, he's doing more damage, so we're going to become immune to cold, because we have to get rid of this thing. Military funding. Okay, so Azrael hits the highest for two. Impact, who takes one. This is not good. You may put a science token on one of your inventions. I will not. If you did not reveal cards from your deck until your villain invention card, put it in place, shuffle the rest back into your deck. Okay. Da -da -da -da. Energy sword. This card is played, play it by hero target, put a science token on it. I'm going to play that by impact. Draw a card. Okay, I know how this is going to work. Or add a science token to the Ure, draw a card, and then I remove three science tokens, deal 11 damage to High Fail, who reacts for nothing. But it's very important that I didn't kill him. I play an escapable pull. When this card is play, draw a card. Won't be able to use it just yet. And then I'll use the energy sword. Remove a science token from this. You do, this hero deals a target 5 energy damage, so that will be 6 energy damage to this shard key. Alright, and he played a card, so that's 2 damage to unity. That kills the shard key, we take no retaliation damage, and it doesn't play an extra card. Draw. Oh, this is bad. Brainstorm. Draw 2 cards. Now, I deal fail 1 damage, and she hits him for 1. I deal jade 1 damage, and then I deal bebot 1 damage, which lets me do 2 damage to something, I'll hit Azrael. And then Volatile Parts hits Azrael, and then I destroy the entry point. I think I was forgetting about that plus one damage, we should probably all be dead by now. But that's no fun, so who cares? Power, ooh, Construction Pylon, Platform Bot, Swift Bot. Those are put into place, we don't take any damage. Okay, draw two cards. Raptor Bot is dealing four damage now. Between the two of them, they can take out High Azrael. That's important. Okay. Freedom Tower. Front desk does the same thing. Mission Control. Local Microgravity. When this card enters play, Impact regains a hit point. Oh, that's nice. That's real good. We need that. First time Impact would be dealt damage each environment turn. Prevent that damage. Okay. And a Platform Bot. Very nice. The bots have the highest HP now. <laughs> and then we play the top card of the environment deck. Cross Cryo Chamber. Oh, boy. Okay. So everybody's taken to cold damage. Hit Jade first. Impact soaks it. Venture Stein is destroyed, which means it deals up to three targets, two fire damage each. That's two to Jade. And the rest doesn't matter. Raptor Bot is destroyed. Even if Venture Stein hit the platform bots or Swift Bot, they wouldn't be destroyed. But that's two volatile parts damage to Jade. And then Unity dies. It's bad because we don't have any... Oh, you know what? He actually doesn't take any damage because of local microgravity. I don't think we have any environment destruction anymore. And oh yeah, Dr. Venture well, the power of science has failed against the power of ancient relics. Now it's time for punching things with gravity. Let's see how long that lasts. Not very. Hi, Jarl. Hi, Jarl. In the villain turn, this card deals a hero target with the highest HP for lightning damage, and uh, he kills impact. And we lose. That's really amazing. <laughs> I thought Jade was going to be easy. Every time I think a villain is going to be easy and give me a good game to show off a hero, it fails. Let's take a look at Guntar's deck. Alchemical Fire, one shot, elixir, drain a number of red. Reveal X cards on the top of your deck where X is twice the number of red, drain plus two. Jeez. <laughs> Guntar deals 2 fire damage each to Y targets where Y's number of red revealed, plus 1, discard the revealed cards. Firewall challenge, ongoing, limited, Guntar is immune to fire damage. Increase fire damage dealt by Guntar by 1. If you didn't notice, um, well I don't know where his character card went to, but he's got Ra's nemesis symbol, probably because this is just so old that coming up with nemesis symbols was not really a thing. Interesting card, weird, not very useful. Classable Laboratory, one shot, reveal cards on the top of your deck until two jars are revealed. Shuffle the other cards into your deck. You may put any of those jars into play. If you do, drain one from each jar put into play this way. Otherwise, put them into your hand. So you would end up getting six instead of seven, but that's kind of useful. Yeah, Sav Saren Oils is the yellow jar. That one starts with five because yellow effects are a little bit better. And it can only hold seven. Outer Maniac, reveal six cards on the top of your deck. Add X red to one jar where X is the number of 
red revealed plus one, drain a number of green or yellow to take as many revealed cards of those colors into your hand, discard the rest. Metabiologic Inducer. Play this card next to a hero card. That hero may use an additional power during their power phase. End of your turn, drain X yellow or destroy this, where X is the number of your turns that this has been in play. So it actually, it's, you know, one the first turn, two the second turn. Metricalculogician. I love, I love the ridiculous names for his cards. Whenever you evaluate X or Z variables on any of your cards, you may add one. Because he doesn't just have X, he has X, Y, and Z. Science, one shot. Search your deck or trash for two formula or elixir cards. You may drain up to two yellow. Put X of those cards into play where X is the number of yellow drained. Shuffle your deck if you searched it. Put the other cards into your hand. Skin scrapings, oh hi medic. Ongoing limited. Increase damage dealt by heroes to non-hero targets by one while at least one copy of that target is in the trash. That's neat. Terminus has a card that kind of does a similar thing. Reduce damage dealt by non-hero targets to heroes by one, while at least one copy of that target is in the trash. So if there are... Wow, that's really neat. Essence... Essence... Essentialis, essence... Essentialism. I can't say that. One shot. Reveal five cards on top of your deck. Add X yellow to one jar, where X is the number of revealed yellow plus one. So it's like Powder Maniac. So, yeah. Same thing. Alchemy. Equipment formula. Drain a green and drain a red. If you do, add four yellow to one jar. Or... Drain two yellow. If you do, add three green to one jar and three red to one jar. That's a very, very useful power. Substitute ingredients. When you would drain anything from jars, you may reveal up to two cards from your hand. For each revealed card, you are considered to drain another of that color of that card. Discard the revealed card. Revitaliation. One shot elixir. Drain any number of green. Guntor gains XHP. Boy, I sure could have used that, where X is the number of green drained. You may drain a yellow. If you do, select another target to regain HP instead. A little bit of team support there. So he's got some really good effects. It just takes a lot of ridiculous setup to get yourself to a point where you can do them. Chemical burn. Equipment formula. Power. Drain any amount of red. Drain up to two yellow. Reveal the top X cards of your deck, where X is twice the number of red drained. Guntar deals Y toxic damage to Z targets, where Y is the number of red revealed plus one, and Z is the number of yellow drained plus one. Discard the revealed cards. Maximum power. Oh, the puns. Reveal five cards from the top of your deck. Select one color and add X of that color to one jar, where X is the number of cards revealed of that color. Discard the revealed cards. You may play a card. Immortability Fetish. Equipment Relic. Whenever Guntar would be dealt damage, you may drain any number of green to reduce that damage by X, where X is the number of green drained. Transfixia Tonic. Equipment Elixir. When this card is played, destroy it or drain one yellow and place this card next to a target. When this target would deal damage, you may redirect that damage, but not to this target. Then drain any number of green and reveal X cards on top of your deck where X is three times the green drained. If you do not reveal at least as many green as damage, don't destroy this card, discard the revealed cards. You start to see how he's ridiculously complicated, and that's by design. Oh hey, there's the character card. See, he's got Ra's nemesis for some reason. And paralysis Temporalysis. Start of your turn, either drain X yellow or all targets affected by this card are no longer affected by it, or X is the number of affected targets plus one. Power, drain two green from a jar. If you do select a target, that target cannot deal damage. So it's not until the start of your next turn, it's you paralyze them, but you have to keep up the yellow in order to keep it in play. Herb Biology. Reveal. Oh, this is, the, uh, this is the green version of the one where you reveal and you can drain to put them in your hand and so forth. Alchemical Meltdown. At the start of the environment, turn destroy all cards in play other than this card, character cards, and relics, then destroy this card. Because this was probably back when there weren't a whole lot of cards, and End of Days was a good idea. <laughs> Alright, that's it for him. Let me see if there's anything else modified in Freedom Tower here. Ah, Ironclad Maintenance Bay was changed, and you can tell, look at how the, the border of that card changes. It says at the end of the environment, turn one player may discard a card. If they do, they may play an equipment card. Probably because that wasn't a very useful effect, and it's kind of annoying to have to do all the time. Yeah, so just the main change there is the entry points, which is honestly a pretty good change, because if nothing else, you can actually get rid of them with a regular party. Tragic as it is, that's it for this round of... Sentinels custom decks. As always, Tabletop Simulator, The Reavers, Sentinels, and Cauldron DLC, Adelphophages, Archives, and Cassandra's Sentinels DLC with updated board art are not licensed greater than games products. Please support the official release and...